Communication stations are getting more common in MMI interviews, and this is because it allows the interviewer to set almost any question as a communication roleplay scenario. Communication is a critical skill that all aspiring medics should have, as it underpins so much of what it is to be a doctor. In this video, I'll give you some high yield techniques that you can use for communication stations at medical school interviews, and we'll talk through an example question. I'll also share what things interviewers are looking for in your answers. So let's get into it, but if you're new here, my name is Rohan and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at Cambridge University. Our example communication question is to explain how vaccines work to a five-year-old. And this question or a similar style could definitely be asked at a medical school interview because it really tests your ability to communicate clearly. It is inspired by the Feynman technique, which basically says that if you're claiming to understand a topic, you need to be able to explain it in simple terms to someone else. And this is why we use a five-year-old in this example. There are really good examples of this technique in a series on YouTube done by Wired, where they explain a single concept at five different levels of complexity. So that's a really good thing to go check out if you want more practice on these types of questions. For any role play station, you should start by introducing your name and your role and confirming the actor's name if applicable. You should then say the reason for why you're having the conversation and then use this technique called signposting to outline the main contents of the discussion. Then make sure that the person consents before proceeding with the discussion. Starting broad like this, make sure that both you and the person you're talking to are on the same page and that they're happy to proceed with the conversation now. So in our scenario, you could start off by saying something like, hello, my name is Rohan and I am a medical student Am I right in thinking your name is, and whoever? Today we're going to talk about something called vaccines, and these are the injections that you sometimes get at the doctors. We'll talk about why we get sick, how vaccines can stop us falling sick, and why vaccines are good. Does that sound okay? Something like this is a good formula to follow in communication stations. Next, we come on to the actual explanation, and it's important to remember that the interviewers are marking us on the clarity of our communication, so even if our explanation is spot on, it needs to be adapted to the situation. So here we're talking to a five-year-old, so we want to use simple language and avoid unnecessary details. And even if you're talking to an adult, it's best to avoid medical jargon or overly scientific terms, as most people won't have the same level of biological understanding as yourself. In any interview station, it's important to speak slowly and clearly. With the nerves that comes with interview, it's very easy to rush and start umming and ahhing, which might make your communication a bit more convoluted and hard to follow. To counter this, it's best to take a breath and to pause for a few seconds just to gather your thoughts before diving into your answer. Remember that in an MMI interview, you often have one minute of reading time, which you can use to plan your answers. An important technique to use in communication stations is called chunk and check. This means breaking down what you plan to say into smaller chunks and checking that the person is understanding as you're going along. So for example, if I was to quickly do the first part of the scenario, I would first ask the five-year-old if they understand what makes you fall sick in the first place. And they may or may not make reference to like bugs or germs. Then I would explain that there are tiny bugs which can get into the body. For example, if we breathe in the air which someone else coughs near us, or if we don't wash our hands and then we touch our face, and they're so small that we can't even see them without a microscope. And then I'd say that some of these bugs can cause us to fall sick. Then I'd round off this chunk by asking if the child has followed what I've just said. So I'll just say something like, does that make sense? Just to check their understanding and give them a chance to ask any questions. Then I'd repeat the same formula again in the next chunk. So first I'd ask the five-year-old whether they know how we get better once we have fallen sick. And they may talk about something like the body killing the germs or the bugs. And I'd say that they're correct before going on to explain further. This slight verbal praise will help keep the child engaged and motivated to continue concentrating in the discussion. So for example, it could go something like, yes, you're right, our body needs to kill the bug. It usually takes some time for our body to kill the bugs which is why you might fall sick for a few days. Vaccines work by 
injecting something into the body which pretends to be a bug. This causes the body to produce something called antibodies, which are used to fight off and kill that specific bug which has infected us. These antibodies can stay in our body for a long time, so the next time that we're exposed to that bug for real, our body can recognize it and kill it faster before we fall sick. And after this, I would check again that the child is following and is able to understand. Another good technique that you can use is summarizing. So for example, for the previous chunk, I could summarize it by saying that vaccines pretend to be a certain bug and cause our body to produce antibodies, which can be used to kill that bug if it comes into our body the next time. And this happens a lot faster, so it stops us falling sick. Summarizing is a good technique because it demonstrates active listening. So even if you're talking to a patient, it shows that you're actively listening to what you're saying to them and they can correct you in case you've misheard something or missed out any important information. At the end of the discussion, it's good practice to screen for any questions. This gives the person an opportunity to clear any misunderstandings that they may have or may have arisen from the conversation. Two more things I wanted to mention about role play communication scenarios. Firstly, do pay attention to how you come across. They often say that people don't remember exactly what you say, but they do remember how you say it. So make sure that you adopt the right tone of voice. So in our example, because we're talking to a child, it's natural to have a slightly higher pitched tone. Make sure that your body language is appropriate. So this usually means sitting upright rather than hunched over and also a slightly open body language can come across more friendly as compared to like arms folded and being very closed off. The final point is an important one for these stations and it's sometimes the actor or the interviewer will purposely misinterpret what you've told them or they won't follow the instructions exactly how you said if the communication station is about giving instructions. If this happens, it's not necessarily a reflection on the clarity of your communication and they're actually just trying to see how you react to that situation. In these situations, it may be necessary to repeat what you've just said or rephrase it in different words if they still don't understand. Sometimes you might get into a tangle when explaining something. For example, I had this the other day when I was trying to explain to an actor that they'd had a heart attack, but they were getting very confused. Often in these scenarios, explaining things in more and more detail is not helpful. And sometimes you might benefit from trying to set the reset button. So for example, you can say something like, okay, I'm sorry if I didn't explain things clearly. Let me try explain it in a different way. This strategy can avoid you digging yourself into a hole and getting more panicked with your explanations. Okay, so that concludes this video on communication stations in MMI interviews. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. You might also want to check out some of my other MMI videos, which I'm sure you'll find helpful. But anyway, take care. I wish you all the best for your interviews and bye for now.